Hello. Um, Dominique, unfortunately, last moment couldn't come. So on behalf of her, I'm going to present this paper today. That's OK? It's OK. Yeah, OK, perfect. So um, should I start my screen right now? Yeah, you can share your screen. OK, thank you. Perfect. Um, in that case, I'll start right now. So first of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, today I'll, and good afternoon, I think it's afternoon there. Um, first of all, um, our paper is called the Second Order Adaptive Neural Network Model of Dreaming and Creativity, which I'll present today. And before, um, I will introduce my topic um, based on an example because you probably know um, the um, benzene structure um, thought by um, or made by um, Kekule. He allegedly um, dreamt about this structure um, in a cabin. Um, this dream can be considered a creative dream. Um, previous reports have also shown us the, that these types of creative dreams so dreaming about something and then using that content um, to solve a problem um, occur about 8% of the time, which is actually quite big. And even though the prevalence is relatively high, um, there is actually not that much research about this topic or um, yeah, phenomenon. So this is why we took it upon us to try and create a model about it. Um, that was the introduction. Next, I'm going to talk about the mechanisms, our model that we and designed simulations, um, analysis I do not have in here, uh, and the discussion. So first of all, um, we define dreaming as um, a series of activated mental images um, as internal or mental simulation uh, with hyper associative characteristics, such as um, you have different types of um, contents sparsed in your head that are non-obvious not obviously connected to each other, but this hyper associative characteristic means that it could be connected to each other, even though it does not seem plausible. For example, um, relating an ape to iron. And this can be seen as creative or associative thinking. Creativity is defined as the ability to combine associative elements, which means to create a new combination using um, previous experiences. So also a sense of create or associative thinking. We found in our literature that there are similar brain and cognitive processes. Um, the ones that we included in our model are that there is an increased striatal um, dopamine concentration, um, which facilitates um, cognitive flexibility and cognitive exploration, which is defined as associative thinking. And this concentration is actually increased in striatum during dreaming. Um, furthermore, the inhibition of remote frontal um, regions, in this case we took the BFC, um, during wakefulness are actually um, preventing or repressing this associative thinking from happening during wake, but are um, less active, so allows for hyper associative thinking uh, during dreaming. And as well, strengthening of learning um, happens through prior experiences. Yes, so with this basis, I will bring you through our modeling approach, which is a self-modeling approach um, made by Yantar, um, which models complex dynamic um, and adaptive processes, including single causal impacts, aggregation of multiple impacts, and also modeling the timing of these impacts to happen. So next um, on the left or on my right, I have um, descriptive, um, have, I have my descriptive model, and the pink planes are the base layer, which is just a singular situation um, effects has or an effect is happening not really adaptive or dependent on anything else. Um, the second layer or the first uh, layer of adaptivity, however, um, models this learning of, of types of connections that we make. It basically helps us sort of like um, based on heavy and learning principle, fire, neurons that fire together, wire together, you're likelier to remember um these types of let's say dreams um if they're if you learn them right um and the second order is um the speed of learning which is modeling metaplasticity um which controls whether learning will um happen or not 
And now I'll show you in an illustrative manner how our model looks. So this is our base plane. And as you can see already, there is a repetitive structure um, in the middle. These structures that are repeated are basically dream stages. As we know, um, our dreams consist of stages or a representation of something that's happening. Um, I want to illustrate that these two BBs I mean problem stages. So there's a problem in the waking in wake um, that someone has. And during a dream, we'll get to some type of solution. Let's do that. So the first, um, I'll explain how this system works because it is essentially a mental simulation of our, our dream. Um, and you can see that there's a choice being made here. Um, this is a mental simulation or a mental image of our dream, um, which leads to a choice process. And reality is probably much, much more chaotic than this. For clarity, we made it more simple. Um, we have, for example, uh, we have a choice between eating ice cream or riding a horse. We assumed in our model that based on personal biases, we automatically choose one over the other. Therefore, in this model, we chose the um, images or let's say states right now um, to um, model the simulations. So what happens over here is that, okay, we chose this stage. We, for example, we choose to eat ice cream. There is a bi-directional um, arrow between these two choices because it's a winner takes all principle. Once eating ice cream, the idea of eating ice cream is more attractive, it activates more, therefore will um, probably um, simulate that mental image um, in our dream stage. Um, Yes, so in this case, the result of this is eating ice cream. And that process continues on the multiple stages of our dreams. Um, as you can see in the front here, this is the prefrontal cortex or uh, the frontal regions of our brain that we assumed um, based on the literature um, that kind of represses, um, yeah, decreases, yeah, represses um, the dream stages to allow for um, hyper associative thinking or an increased chance thereof. Uh, the WS state means waking, wake state, and the DA is the dopamine, and the SS is sleep stage. Um, as you can see here, when we're asleep, it represses the, as a repressed um, effect on the frontal regions, but it has an increasing effect on the dopamine, um, which I'll show in the next part, which is the first, I can press next. Yes, the next part is the first um, order of adaptivity. It's not very well shown here, but there's an arrow going from dopamine to the TPS, which is an adaptation of the thresholds of the preparation states that you saw before. Also, these preparation states means the preparation for this imagery of eating ice cream, for example. Um, this lowers the activation states, which means if there's a lower um, activation, Threshold, it means that there's a higher chance of this state or that BS state of eating ice cream increases. Therefore, you'll imagine that dream. Um, and that's further repressed by uh, the dopamine. Um, and therefore, it decreases all of these chosen states. Um, the next one is based on heavy and learning principle, um, the W states, which basically include learning. Um, as well as remembering or retention of that learning of these states that we chose, one of which is the eating ice cream, once again. Uh, the last, last um, layer we have is the second order adaptation. Um, we found in literature that actual dream recall um, has is very much associated with remembering your dream. So this M MW state means the retention of or remembering those um, dream stages that we talked about before, uh, which relate to all the chosen stages we had. And the HW stages, uh, again, represent whether there will be learning. So if they were not here, there probably wouldn't be any learning at all. This is the entire model. And as you can see, as I described before, there is a connection from the, the minuses over here but this minus should be there from the dopamine to the thresholds or adaptation thresholds, which then lower all these chosen um, preparation states for the 
screen pages. Okay, so the first simulation that we did was with Stream Recall. Um, to illustrate our model, I basically have these problem states. Um, this is all during wake, all between here. And um, this is the sleep state. So a person occurs one problem, dreams at some point, and at another point in time, let's say 24 hours later, that they reoccur or the problem reoccurs. So they will have to think about the problem again. Um, this shows the um, biological underpinnings that we spoke that I spoke about before, which is the increase of dopamine in striatal um, in striatum, as you can see here, the lowering of the thresholds of the preparation states that I spoke about, and the um, repression or decrease of frontal, let's say, repression on the preparation states. Again, um, here we can see within the dream state. What happens is the activation of um, the mental simulations of, of these dream stages, one of which, again, eating ice cream. Um, underneath here, you see um, activation of the choices that weren't made. But it's important to show this because it shows that these choices were considered um, by us in our sleep. Um, but the others were chosen as well, as you can see by the high activity. Uh, most important here, these are the W states, which then um, you can see they continue being very active or remembered, um, even during wake, um, also when the second problem is reoccurring. And most importantly, we also modeled as an outcome the solution. Um, let's say there is a solution in our dream that we had before, which is over here. Um, we will forget about it during the day because we not, don't necessarily think about our dream, but once the problem reoccurs, um, we will again think about our dream. And because the connections were so strong, um, we remember again, oh yes, this was the solution to my problem. Next part was uh, without dream recall. Um, and you can see it's already quite different. Um, most importantly are these W states, which show they weren't as active as we saw before. Um, and even when it's the problem is being recalled again, um, we just don't remember it that well. The important to see is that during the dream, we did come to a conclusion. So we did have a creative dream, let's say, but because we don't remember it and don't recall it, we also don't come to the conclusion again, even if we're confronted again with, with that problem, because again, we do not remember it. And then next, um, conclusion discussion. We think this is one of the first models um, that actually that tried to demystify this phenomenon and specifically um, creative problem solving. We did show with our model how it could be possible that, that this phenomenon occurs. Of course, um, there could be improvements to this model and there are some limitations. First of all, this um, study was based on theory. Um, it would be nice if there was some more data, experimental data on it. Um, as well, as I said before, the dream sequence is just not very realistic. It's made for simplicity because normally it would probably be a big expansion of, of choices that you can make in your dream or how we can model that. Um, subsequently, there is possibly, most likely, other biological underpinnings of dreaming and creativity. And I specifically want to note that we use the BFC as an assumption or as a grant um, region in this paper, but there's a high possibility or it's, it's possible that there's a, that's a more specific reason or region that is um, inherent to this um, phenomenon. Um, and also approach related traits uh, such as how open am I even to use this stream to solve my problem for example. But overall, we think this is a good um, foundation to demystifying um, this phenomenon that we sometimes, that may have led Kekulé to thinking about the um, benzene structure, um, as well as how we might um, think about the solutions in our dreams. So that was um, my, our paper. Thank you for listening to your question.
Oh, I do not hear. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. We know we, we will now proceed with questions from the audience. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand. Yes. I have a question uh, about the, uh, it's uh, quite promising modeling uh, about your last comments about uh, regarding the improvements. I was thinking in uh, this uh, realistic, there is, there is a, a series of experiments using imaging, uh, neural imaging during uh, waking, uh, the, the people waking it from California, the University of California. And they, they register in, in, in magnetic resonance, the imaging uh, that possibly has to do with the imaging they just saw, they, was, they were presented. Uh, and that kind of phenomena, I think that, that would be very interesting uh, to fit your, your model. And the other stuff that I was thinking is uh, when you said about this more realistic uh, uh, neuroscience data uh, from neuromodulatory uh, incomes, inputs, outputs would be would 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 only add to the, the possibility. But but I was thinking I was thinking that not just um, the the possible decisions, but the using of uh, data from image images present. Uh, representation of images could be very interesting for your for your work. Thank you. There's a way for you to send me some that would be also nice, and I can look it up definitely. Thank you for your comment. Any other questions? I also have a question. Yes. Uh, do, do you think that with this model uh, that you're used, uh, mm -hmm. it is possible to? represent a dream uh, where different things happen at the same time? Because it, it seems that you're always putting things in sequences, but uh, I was wondering if you could represent something that are happening at the same time. Yes, because our dreams are kind of sh in shambles usually. Um, I think there should there, there could be a possibility. Um, I wouldn't know how to answer it specifically right now, but um, there are modeling techniques for that to happen at the same time for multiple outputs um, to happen in, in, for example, one stage of dreaming. So I think your, my answer is yes, it is possible. But how? I could not answer right now. Okay, thank you. Uh... Well, it seems the time for questions is over. So if anyone in the audience have further questions, they can, con they can get in touch with the author directly.